Cooper, go get it. Come on. Oh, you can catch that one. Let's go. Come on. I decided last fall that I would like a puppy. And Cooper was born February 2nd, one of 10, three boys and seven girls. And we picked him up eight weeks later. He was sweet, very nice temperament. When we brought him home, the kids were so excited. They wrapped themselves in a blanket and the dog and they wrestle with him on the floor. And he's jumping all over the blanket and biting and just going absolutely berserk. And that is the worst thing you can ever do with a dog because then they learn that they can bite you and they can play with you. But the kids had so much fun. Cooper's also learned that walk time is play time. Come on. Getting him to behave on the leash is difficult. It's a challenge because of the jumping up and biting, because of the pulling on the leash. Oh, Cooper, look, no, no, leave it alone. He'll lunge at other dogs. Um, if he passes other people, he'll jump up on them. I try to get him to heal, but it's been 15 years since I've trained a dog, and I guess I've forgotten everything. He can be a little monkey. Despite his mischief, Leslie sees a lot of potential in Cooper. What I would like to do is to visit seniors' homes and disabled homes, and that's through something called the Good Neighbor Program, where your dog becomes a respected member of society and therefore is qualified and well-behaved enough to go and visit these, these group homes. I think he would be very good. He's got the disposition where he's, um, he's pretty laid back. It's just a matter of teaching him not to jump up on people or to be frightened by a wheelchair. No, don't, don't, stop it. I'm hoping to learn more so that I can teach him. These dogs are extremely smart and they pick up like that on new concepts. So I'm hoping that we will have a well-trained dog because I want a good dog. going to do some test requirements for the K-9 Good Neighbor Evaluation. The K-9 Good Neighbor Evaluation is a program put together by the Canadian Kennel Club to help dog owners become interested in good dog behavior. We're going to start off with uh, meeting a friendly stranger. No. I will shake your hand stay. and I expect your dog will stay quietly and calmly beside you without you holding him back. There's two rules in dog training. The first one is say what you mean and mean what you say. So when you tell your dog to sit, he sits the first time, not the fifth time. What is your dog's name? Molson. Okay, Molson can't come up. So now what you want to do, rather than hold on the leash, put your hand on his collar next time. Okay. And if he doesn't sit when you tell him the first time, then the second rule of dog training comes into play. And that is for every order there's an action, and for every action there's a consequence. Hi, my name's Ken. Good morning. Your my name's na Leslie. Leslie. Okay, we need to work with... Cooper. With Cooper. Cooper kind of had a big jump up there, so bring him what back. What the dog has learned when walking with Leslie and jumping up and chewing was she stopped and played with him. And as a result, the dog is going to keep doing that. Is this your dog Cooper? This is Cooper. Can I pet Cooper? If you want to break that habit, what you have to do is teach the dog that he doesn't get his way. Good. Oh, nice clean ears. You can just ignore it because dogs in nature are lazy. They sleep 16 hours a day and that's what we just as soon be doing as walking with me. So as long as he keeps jumping up and going after the leash and fighting and I ignore it, he finally gets tired and says, I quit, I'm just gonna walk. You take your dog for a walk and if the first thing you do is pull tight on his collar, then that's the way he's gonna walk with you. If you walk off with a loose leash all the time and you keep it loose and you just communicate, then the dog will listen to you. If you walk out and you want to make some corners like the test requires, a 90 degree left, a 90 degree right, and 180 degree corners, if you make your 90 degree left first and you walk in front of the dog, the dog learns that you've taken a dominant role in that walk. When we walk off, we are going to walk to our left, to our left, to our left, and we're going to walk to our left. A little bit tighter circle when we start off. I'm just bumping into him as my leg comes forward. And what he's finding out, just from that little bit of exercise, is that my left leg is in charge. And now I'm gonna let the leash be looser. And there's no pressure on him with the leash. And now he's learnt in that little cycle that my left leg uh -uh, is in charge. And I'm not having to use the leash at all. He's made a choice on his own. 
to help if you make the 90 degree corner to the right first the dog wanders off by himself and says you went your way I'm going mine and you've lost control of your dog so what you want to do is you want to take advantage of the uh, things that are presented to you that let you lead and be in charge tight circle to your left make your dog listen one more time around this is why you don't require choke collars or pinch collars to teach your dog your dog has learnt that you're in charge of its territory. Look at how Caesar is settling down now. We're getting him to settle down just by walking because they're learning they can't play. What has to happen is he has to have a new learning. And he has to learn that the jumping and the biting and the chewing on the leash have a negative consequence or no positive consequence. If you go into it trying to analyze what you're going to do and not thinking how the dog sees it, you'll likely fail. Cooper, stay! And walk out fast, 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 never take your eye off your dog and return fast. <laughs>